What does it, cousins? I'm Jolene GC and the place to be co-creator and producer of the Come Up series. And this is Wealth Rituals, a show about the mindset, insight, preparation, goals, and the emotional ups and downs on this journey to wealth building. I'm taking y'all back to the very first year of my investment journey and spilling all of the financial tea. So get ready. Today, we are going to talk about one of my favorites, Stock Bay, aka SMH. SMH is an exchange traded fund, which is otherwise known as an ETF that um, is full of semiconductors, which those are the components that you find in all of our electrical devices from phones, cameras, gaming devices, you name it. Those components are most likely using semiconductors. I remember when I couldn't even afford SMH. Like, I couldn't even afford one contract, so there was no one contract game for me. All I could do was wait patiently, watch SMH daily to see the big ups and downs that it would go through on occasion, um, and research. So I would research all of the companies, all of the top 10 companies. And one thing about SMH, if you go to their main website, which will be in the description box below, if you go to their website and you look at SMH, you can see that they change the amount of their holdings every single day. So during this time, when I first was looking at SMH sometime last year, SMH, their top 10 holdings was um, Taiwan Semiconductors, uh, Intel, NVIDIA, AMD, Applied Materials, ASML, uh, Lucy Broadband, Qualcomm, <laughs> Texas Instruments, and I think that was the main 10. You'll have to count those out. I think those were the top 10. So I would just look at all those companies. Oh, and Lamb Research. That was the other one. So I will look at all those companies and just research them, read news, and just to figure out like, okay, what was SMH going through? What was SMH up to in the world? Just to get acquainted with it, because at the time, SMH, again, was totally out of my league. At this time, there were a few things that I deeply desired, including SMH. And I'm actually gonna read to you what I posted on January 1st of 2019 on my Instagram, um, because it gives you my mindset, like what I was thinking at that time. In 2019, I intend to spirit, spend the year developing the concept of a global curator. So at that time, the GC and Jolin GC actually stood for a global curator and it's changed every single year. I don't even remember what the previous years are, but it's how I go about approaching the year. I give it a theme and the theme is associated to my name. So just recently, I actually changed the GC from global curators to gathering cousins, because that's what we're doing. We're gathering the cousins to walk away. All right, so back to what I was saying. Mm. So a global curator meant to me, um, I get to travel throughout the African diaspora, finding amazing artists and art to showcase on my platform, partner with arts institutions interested in creating exhibits that leverage technology, work with large budgets to execute the vision, build my personal art collection for future tour dates, be mentored by curators whom I admire, and continue making bold requests to champion the future of art. You notice I didn't say anything about investing, I didn't say anything about trading, and I definitely didn't say anything about SMH. But what's interesting about all that is as I strongly identified as an artist, I think I was still figuring out what my identity looked like as far as an investor or a trader. And also what's funny is that currently, right now, we're in the Northwest African American Museum located in Seattle, Washington in a historically black neighborhood called the Central District. So I'm surrounded by amazing art quotes, amazing black history, um, all relative to where I grew up. I'm originally from Seattle, Washington. So I totally feel at home with the art being here and, um, it's amazing that we have this partnership. And it's also pretty cool that 
as I'm telling you the story, like my art world and my investment world are colliding like right before your eyes. So at that time, all I was thinking about was legacy and my impact on the world and how I was going to make other black artists millionaires. That's all I was thinking about at that time. But in silence, I was plotting on SMH. I think the toughest part about that time was waiting because I was using XLK, you know, our parent stock. I was using XLK as leverage to be able to afford SMH. And at that time, I don't remember how much SMH was, but all I knew is that it was super expensive and I had to wait until my XLK started to run up so that I could shave off contracts and then ultimately purchase some SMH. Once I was able to actually afford SMH, I was super excited. Now this was pre money gun days, so there was no busting of the guns, but I was super excited. So I remember actually purchasing my SMH and then thinking, oh my gosh, this is it. This is it. I've, I've arrived. My account has arrived. Now, surprisingly, what ended up happening is that I felt super bad. I did not expect that feeling to happen. I hadn't even been in the trade for 2.3 seconds and all of a sudden, all of this doubt and fear crept in like, oh my gosh, you just put all of this money into SMH. Y'all barely know each other. And what if you lose it all? That's all I was thinking was, what if I lost it all? And I just felt so heavy. I'm pretty sure I called Mark. I probably was crying and laughing all in the same conversation. But that was like the turmoil that I was going through at that time. Now, once I calmed down from all that, I had big plans for SMH. See, SMH introduced me to NVIDIA. And so once I knew about NVIDIA, then I began plotting on NVIDIA. But really, I knew that SMH was going to be the ETF that was going to make it happen. So as a review, I went from XLK, shaved off a few contracts in order to buy a position in SMH. And then I knew that I was gonna go from SMH to NVIDIA, for example. And then for the record, NVIDIA is side stock bay. SMH is stock bay, NVIDIA is side stock bay. I know there's a lot of entanglements going on, but SMH knows our time together is our time together and our time apart is our time apart. So as all this doubt started to creep in, I was asking myself, oh my gosh, what did I just do? Am I gambling? Maybe I should have left my money on the side for like a month or so. Just all of this doubt, all these questions, and it felt unsettling being in this new position where I had this new um, liquidity. So it was just, I was, I was, I was tripping y'all, just put it that way. I was really like going through it. Something amazing started to happen though. As the doubt started to disappear, SMH was going on a run. And I almost low key feel like the rest is history. Now, SMH and I, we do have what people may call a toxic relationship. It's up, it's down. And that's why it's important to stick to it for the long call, you know? It's really funny how these stocks can mimic some like relationship values, you know? It's like when times are rough, they're rough and you just gotta stick, stick it through, you know? Um, but if it, you know, gets to be too toxic, AKA like your stock is just plummeting, well, it's time to go. But SMH wasn't a damaged stock and it definitely didn't have any damaged companies. So it was good. It was real, real good. I mean, like SMH was probably responsible for blowing up my account. SMH, XLK, and some XLY too. That's a whole other story. One of the biggest things that I learned from this entanglement with SMH was the importance of setting metrics of your success outside of dollar figures. You all know, I've said it time and time again, that after a while, money starts to get boring. Why? Because it's inevitable when you're trading in this way, when you're like doing your rolling fours and you have a consistent, you know, quarterly contribution or what have you, the money is going to come. You know, the 500%, the 750%, the 1000% return, all of that is going to come. So it just starts to get 
boring. So it's important that you set uh, metrics of success that are outside of dollar amounts. So for me, SMH really marks this spot where the first time that I could feel the effects of liquidity, it's a whole different feeling when you start off with whatever amount that you have, and then you build up a little bit, and then you shave off, and then you get into another position, and you start to see, like, it's almost like a mountain climb. And then when you're on top of just this one little mountain, you see other, you start to see other mountains. You get a, high, a higher perspective, and then you start to see other mountains that you wanna climb. With SMH, I learned so much. One of the key things that I learned was that as I was thinking about SMH was as the way to like grow my portfolio, one thing I did not know is that, or I didn't, I also didn't even expect it. I didn't know that SMH was going to also mark my own uh, growth as far as my own personal growth, which blew my mind. Like as I was going back thinking about this, it blew my mind because SMH was the first trade where I actually felt like an investor, I actually felt like a trader. You know, like I had researched all these different companies. Like I made my trade. Um, I had the doubt, I, you know, doubted myself. And then I overcame that doubt. And then I was really confident and was just rocking with it. And so like, I like to think that SMH was the first stock that truly saw me for me. And that is why SMH will always be stock bay. No matter how well Nvidia does, no matter how well Tesla does, SMH was the first stock that, or ETF rather, that saw me for me and allowed me to see myself as an artist, as a curator, as an investor, as a trader, all of these things, just multifaceted. SMH saw all of those things in me. So who's your stock bay? This is Jolyn GC and The Place to Be, and this time The Place to Be just happens to be the Northwest African American Museum in the historic neighborhood called the Central District located in Seattle, Washington. And this has been Wealth Rituals.